Hey, it's Mike here, and today, are vegan leathers worse for the planet? Are these faux leathers, which are usually made with plastic, which would make anybody think that they're the worst thing ever, are they actually worse than animal-based leather? This is a claim I've been hearing more and more and directly from the leather industry, of course. You know, they state it as a fact that most alternatives to leather are considerably less environmentally friendly in the long run. I thought, I'm not a fan of plastic. Maybe there's some truth to this. So I did an in-depth look at it and really tried to use independent sources and reports that weren't by either industry to see what the emissions were, for example. We're also going to take a look at the toxicity of all of these products because that's pretty much inescapable here until we get to some cool alternatives that we're gonna talk about as well. And we of course have to address the longevity of each of these products because that's one of the main claims. And of course ask the question, is leather really just a byproduct of the meat industry? And just to keep things clear, when I'm talking about vegan leather, I might also use terms like like faux leather or pleather. Sometimes it's referred to as synthetic leather in many cases, unless it actually is made out of organic materials that we'll talk about. And firstly, I just have to say that there is no question that when we're comparing these different types of leather, animal versus non-animal, the animal cruelty aspect is obviously worse for the animal ones. Nobody can, I'm sure some anti-vegan would argue that, but there's a reason that they're called animal hides, because if you saw somebody skinning an animal and making one, you would probably want to go run and hide. Yes, I'm that lame. And then we are talking about the planet, so we do care about species extinction of animals, which is sort of an extension of animal cruelty. And because animal agriculture is likely the leading driver of species extinction, clearly leather plays some role in encouraging that. Now, I do think that emissions are the most important thing here in terms of the long-term effects on the planet, whether the planet will be survivable in the future. But I do think that toxins are often the first thing that are pointed to here. So let's do a toxin toxin comparison of animal versus non-animal leather. But for to zoom out and look at both of these industries, in terms of leather, the main toxic aspect is, many of you might have guessed it, the tanning process, which we'll go into in a second. And then in terms of the synthetic types of vegan leather, which do make up the majority currently, we are talking about various petroleum products that emit pollutants as they are produced and then can also create things like microplastics down the line. We're gonna cover that. And first we can look at animal leather, which a lot of people just think of as not toxic. It's a natural product, right? But let's look at the tanning industry for a second because in 2021, it was globally valued at $400 billion. A lot of heavy chemicals can be used in this process that can have bad downstream effects. These include things like arsenic, formaldehyde, and the main one, chromium, in what is called chrome tanned leather. This is very toxic process. According to the EPA, 90% of the leather made in the US is chrome tanned and globally it's roughly 90% as well. But in terms of a lot of products you might be thinking of like leather clothes and leather shoes, we're talking about the upper part of shoes, not the sole being about 95% of that from chrome tanned leather. And then virtually 100% of leather clothing is chrome tanned. In the tanning process, we use chromium three, but that can oxidize into chromium-4, which is a known carcinogen, so it's not good and not a surprise that we can see some increased cancer risks in some tannery workers. Like, historically, in Sweden, we've seen about a 50% increase in prostate cancer rates in tannery workers. And from the study in India, tannery workers, despite smoking less than the control group, still had four times the rate of respiratory problems, so it's bad for your lungs. <laughs> It's also bad for your skin. This study in Bangladesh found that about a quarter of tannery workers had skin issues, not good. Your leather purses, your leather boots are made by these guys right here. There's so many risks. They're not scared. I could go on and on about that, but we're talking about the planet. So it's worth mentioning that from this study, about 85% of the chromium that is used in this process makes it into the wastewater. So it's no surprise that in Bangladesh, they were able to measure high levels of chromium in the water, which they say, you know, will likely enter the groundwater and lead to what they described as a great threat in the near future. That's chromium, that's the chemical 
coming out of the factory. And this water is then taken, goes straight into the river, the main river in Bangladesh. But let's balance it out a little bit here by looking at these vegan synthetic leathers, which clearly make up the majority of them. They're the cheapest to make, they're the widely available ones, and those are made out of PVC or polyurethane, PU, and PU as in you gross applies more to PVC because it is by far the more toxic one. And that's because polyvinyl chloride emits dioxin in the production process, which is a persistent organic pollutant. You really don't want it around. And it's likely going to be leaching that at the end of its cycle as it likely turns into microplastics in a landfill PVC, really not good. Polyurethane, however, is considered way, way less toxic. It doesn't emit endocrine disruptors. Polyurethane also lasts longer, so it turns out it only makes up about 2% of ocean plastic, for example. So I think that the key here is to be not buying PVC vegan leather, but buying polyurethane instead if you aren't able to afford the other ones that we'll go into later. But yeah, synthetic vegan leather, really not gonna be recycled. It's gonna end up in a landfill and it's going to last a long time. However, this brings me to how leather from animals is viewed as biodegradable, but the chrome tan stuff especially is going to be significantly less biodegradable than just an animal skin would be. And it'll probably leach some of that chromium as well. I mean, this is unimaginable and in violation of environmental laws. And they are polluting, but they are not treating. They are not paying. Anyway, let's move on to the really important stuff, and that is the emissions of each of these products. Now the gut feeling here is that because these vegan leathers contain plastic, they're automatically worse in all scenarios, uh, but that's just not the case, surprisingly to people. So we're going to be looking to the UN report here from 2017 on leathers emissions. Now, they did an in-depth analysis here and they determined that cow leather emits about 110 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per square meter of leather product. And by contrast, synthetic leather, they have right in at 15.8 kilograms of CO2 equivalent per square meter. So we're talking about seven times worse for cow leather than vegan leather in this case. And I would add that even if you're trying to cheat the whole system here and say, oh, it's just a byproduct, which I'll argue against in a second here, it still emits 17 kilograms after the slaughterhouse. So it's still even worse in that respect totally cheating. But I'm interested in getting as many comparisons as we can, and we have another one by the Boston Consulting Group. They made an analysis for the fashion industry, essentially, also from 2017. And from this chart, you can see that, yes, cow leather is well over twice as environmentally impactful as synthetic leather is, and this includes several areas of environmental impact. So we can see we now have multiple reports showing that it's several times worse for the environment to be using animal-based leather as it is to be using synthetic leather, as counterintuitive as that might be for some people. But this brings me to the argument against vegan leather that it's just crappy and it doesn't last nearly as long. So by the time you've had to buy five pairs of vegan shoes, you're gonna be emitting way more than that cow leather. Well, let's analyze that a little bit. Everybody has probably had experience with crappy fake leather from some crappy product, buying some faux leather purse that just the strap snapped or something. But here's the deal, a lot of these are fast fashion products, and so whether you're buying a faux leather fast fashion product or a real leather fast fashion product, something on it is probably gonna break pretty quickly anyway, sadly. So we have our pleather in the $10 handbag, but then we also have pleather that is used in luxury cars like Lexus that obviously can last a really long time, and we'll talk about some long-lasting pleather in a second, but this sent me down a huge rabbit hole of trying to just find a real neutral quantitative comparison for the lifespan of these products, which just did not exist. But I did find a quote from Infographic Journal, which seemed to be pretty neutral here, and that is, quote, low quality leather, bonded leather, or pleather shoes can last for six months with regular use. I know it's annoying we don't have any real data here, but that statement does highlight something that's really important, and that is that low quality leather also does not last very long. And so when we're talking about what is likely the majority of leather purchased, that is also probably low quality leather. You know, we're not talking about high quality, well taken care of leather that could be 
lasting for decades. Which brings me to another point. You can also stretch out the life of pleather and have it last decades as well. I have two things that I wanna share with you. First of all, I have my vegan upcycled conveyor belt belt that I bought seven years ago, I think at a veg fest. And this thing still looks perfectly brand new and has been my main belt that entire time. I know that's not decades, but speaking of decades, the chair that I am sitting on you can hardly see it. This is made by Gunlock Industries. This is the 21C chair. They started making these in the 60s with vinyl. A lot of them still look great. This one in particular was from 1985 and looks pristine. Awesomely, I found it in a dumpster, got it for zero dollars, heck yeah. So yeah, I'm sitting on a chair that is like 40 years old and still the fake leather on it looks perfect. And a lot of leather couches certainly have dried out and cracked over the last even five or 10 years. And since I just showed some ideal, pretty much zero emissions scenarios, it's fair to say that a lot of people will respond to their leather being the worst leather by mentioning what would be considered a nirvana fallacy, an appeal to the ideal situation, which I just did. However, I think it's good to compare both of these ideal situations, the ideal cow leather one, and then the ideal vegan leather one. And we need to look at solutions that can be systemic here. Anybody could just find a used version of either of these and say they're perfect and have zero emissions. But in the same way that dumpster diving doesn't solve emissions from food because not everybody can do it, not everybody can go out and buy a used pair of something because we'll run out eventually. So let's first throw out the ideal situation for cow leather. People would probably say regenerative grazing, holistic grazing, something like that. I've gone in depth into why that is very much greenwashed. Have a whole video with all the numbers that I'll link below. But just to mention briefly, we're talking about a lot of things like the soil carbon saturation or limit that a farmed grassland can hold in terms of carbon. Even the White Oaks Pasture report that was commissioned by them mentions that this is about 10 years and then you're done. They also ignore methane numbers, like how less than half of CO2 makes it into the atmosphere, but all of methane does. And then over 20 years, we're talking about methane being 86 times as powerful as CO2. All of these are things that make any lucky carbon sequestration that could possibly occur on a cow farm just be completely dwarfed by emissions. But this brings up the other type of tanning, which is not chrome tanning, and that is just natural vegetable tannin or plant-based tannin tanning the traditional way. Again, that's about 10% of all that is tanned, but of course that then removes the toxic aspect of leather. So that's kind of the best you can get. Still emitting a ton of emissions, but not being as toxic. And now this brings us to the tons of amazing new vegan leather alternatives. Some of them are not so new. For example, one that I think is the best in terms of emissions while we're on the topic, and that is cork. Yes, I know it's not the strongest one, although it is self-healing. It appears that in a lot of situations, your cork leather product could be carbon negative. Today, not some other time in the future. Unfortunately, they're a bit expensive here, but we were just in Spain and Lindy bought this purse backpack thing for her mom that was made of cork, which was very reasonably priced and looks amazing. I think it looks better than leather. And we have a bunch of other fungi or plant-based leather companies. We have ones that are using the rest of the fruit plant. We're talking about mangoes, apples, and pineapples. The main one here is Pinatex, which has actually been producing stuff for several years in 2019. They did a partnership with H&M where they did a collection, which I think looks pretty awesome. However, H&M is not making up for all of their fast fashion sins with that alone. But Pinatex is an awesome company that seeks to not only spread sustainability, but also support women. And Pinatex uses the fiber that is within the extra pineapple leaves, which would literally just be a thrown out byproduct. And Veg Skin is using banana and mango byproducts to make leather there. Can't wait to see them get going. We also have cactus leather, which I think looks very impressive and convincing. And then we have the world of fungi slash bacteria. We have SCOBY leather, which is from the kombucha SCOBY that's left over, which I think would be really fun to experiment with. So if you guys want me to make a video trying to do that, I will. Just let me know down below. And then we also have mushroom-based leather, which also has a cool texture. 
And we also have Alter Napa, which is used by Stella McCartney in her sort of high-end vegetarian vegan fashion stuff. And it is a mix of vegetable oil, recycled polyester and polyurethane. But now we need to address the idea that leather is simply a byproduct. This is leaned really heavily on by leather supporters. They say animals are grown for meat and then leather is something that just exists anyway and that's why we use it. If we weren't growing meat, we wouldn't use it, which I think is dishonest. First of all, a lot of animals are grown for their specific type of leather, although that's more of a luxury thing. You know, For an ostrich, their skin, their hide, can be 80% of their value as a dead animal. So we have to ask in terms of the cow, cattle, bovine, whatever you want to call it, industry, what percentage are we talking about in terms of an animal's value for leather? And it turns out that this is a wildly variable thing historically from the industry, not choosing vegan sources here, we're talking about five to 15% of the animal's value globally. You know, and that might be closer to six to 8% in the US. However, because of COVID in the US in particular, that has just crashed weird market forces. I haven't seen specifically explained why. Other than how, get this, the increased quality and availability of synthetic leathers have made the demand for cow leather go down. So it's kind of funny how perhaps it wasn't a byproduct, but maybe if enough people are just buying vegan leathers, then it will become a useless byproduct, kind of a self-fulfilling anti-prophecy. I don't know where I'm going with this. But as that leather industry article mentions, the price is going back up after COVID. It is rebounding. So yes, there is a value here. So I would consider it a co-product some people describe it as a subsidy of the industry. Either way, that is money that is going into the pocket of this industry to expand, to exploit, to do damage to the environment, and on and on. So I would say, historically, it is fair to claim that about 10% of the negative environmental impacts of meat from cows has been leather driven. And I still don't think something being a byproduct only justifies it being consumed. I think a lot of people who would make the argument that it's just a byproduct, leather's just a byproduct. You know, a lot of those people probably wouldn't wanna support the use of fly ash, which is a byproduct of the coal industry. However, really at the end of the day, they're both having huge negative impacts on the environment and greenhouse gas emissions. In the end, well, there can be toxicity issues in both of these areas, animal and synthetic based leathers. Polyurethane is a huge improvement probably on both of those. However, if you're able to spend more money and as these companies develop more, we're going to be having fully eco-friendly, non-toxic, biodegradable vegan leathers. Some of them are already available if you can spend the money. But the main point here is that cow leather is worse for the environment because the emissions are so much greater that even if there is some difference in lifespan, it's not gonna make up for say seven times worse. You don't have to buy seven pairs of vegan shoes to make up for one pair of leather shoes. And whether it's a byproduct or not, it is contributing generally to about 10% of a cow's value, therefore it's a major driver, it has been and probably will be again, even if it's not right now, a major driver of animal agriculture. So no excuses. Yeah, so go support some of these vegan companies if you are so able and we can increase the amount that is produced and lower the cost, which would be awesome. Let me know down below what you think about all of this. And as usual, feel free to help me out by liking, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.